Hi, I'm Darnell with Wave 11 Recipes, and this is my review of the Emerald 25L Digital Air Fryer Oven. So now I'm going to go ahead and get it unboxed. And here's our box within the box, so let's get things out of here now. Alright, so now we've got everything all unboxed. And I guess I'll start by saying the reason why I got this cooker, the reason why I got it, is because it was a too good deal to pass up. Um, Best Buy had a sale on it for a very short period of time. It's no longer on sale. But the sale that they had, it was less than $90, brand new. And so, you know, I was like, hey, got to get that. You know, it's just too, too sweet of a deal to pass up. So that's why it's here. But the 25L in the name stands for 25 liters. It's 25 liters in capacity. And I know online there is a similar looking cooker to this made by a company called Comdo. And I think they sell a lot on Amazon. But Emerald, and this is Emerald like the uh, Jewel Emerald, not Emerald. But the Emerald, which this is, is not the Comdo. And I even sent the folks at Emerald who made this, or, you know, who basically have their name on this, hey, I said, you know, do you guys, um, you know, have any association with Comdo? And they said, no, they're a totally different company, they're not us. Um, I did notice that Comdo and Emerald are both claiming to be based in the U.S., but they source the cooker from out of a manufacturer in China. So, you know, that's for what it's worth. Now, I want to show you the power cord. It is a long, pretty long power cord. And it's a three-prong uh, power cord, so it's a grounded power cord. And this is an 1800 watts cooker, so pretty powerful. Now I want to show you the accessories that came with the cooker real quick comes with a couple of oven mitts and so here we have these little you know mitts these are similar to the ones that come with the ninja foodie but these are I guess a little stickier these are just a little stickier than and I guess that's kind of hard to describe but here inside of this stuff it's a little stickier but you know just some mini oven mitts to grab things out with comes with the manual of course in the manual the first um, I think it's like maybe 19 pages are manual stuff you like the first 19 pages or actually a little more the first 22 pages are manual stuff in the manual and then after that they're recipes so their recipes basically starts at page 23 and goes through to page 35 their recipes most of the recipes are like two per page so you get a lot of recipes you know when you're talking about two per page out of this manual here they have a baking pan it's a it looks like a full width no it's not a full width baking pan we can just check right quick to uh you know see the length of it oh it is a full width. yeah so it goes across the full width of the cooker and you basically can get your stuff in there without having to have an extra rack used to put your stuff on when you're baking and such. It's got the air fry basket. It's a full width air fry basket with the, uh, you know, basically the rails on it. So you don't have to put this onto a rack when you use it. And then there's kind of like your pizza type rack, your, you know, your rack for bread and things like that. And so those are all the accessories that come with the cooker. And now I want to also show you that underneath is your drip pan that slides out here so you have this slide out drip pan that you just pull from the bottom there and this cooker they say that you can basically use anything that you would like basically in a conventional oven you can use in this so the same types of stuff that you would in a conventional oven all that stuff you can use with this and its accessories you know however you see fitting so any questions in that regard, if you can do it in your regular oven, yes. If you can't, no. That's the basically easiest way to answer any questions regarding what you can, can't, should, or should not use in it. 
And this cooker has a temperature range of 100 degrees Fahrenheit to 450 degrees Fahrenheit. And so basically can do anything from proofing up to air frying. And the time range for this cooker, it has time range up to 12 hours. The maximum is 12 hours. It varies depending on the functions, but we'll go over that in full detail in a little bit. I do want to also point out that you are supposed to give about four inches, roughly four inches all around of clearance to this cooker. And its dimensions are 17.7 inches in length, 15.75 inches in width, and 14.7 inches in height. Now, some of you may be thinking about something like the Cuisinart Digital Air Fryer Toaster Oven because cookers of this design, in my opinion, started there with the Cuisinart Digital Air Fryer Toaster Oven, which I have a full review of already on the channel. Lots of cooks already on the channel. Full playlist, full of content with that cooker already here on this channel. And I may have been, if not the first, one of the first to do YouTube's about that, or YouTube videos about that particular cooker. May have been the first. But um, <clears throat> basically, I just wanted to give you a comparison of the dimensions of this cooker with the Cuisinart Digital Air Fryer Toaster Oven, just so that you have an idea. And these dimensions come from Williams Sonoma, because some of the dimensions for that cooker I found to not be exactly what I witnessed in my use of the cooker. So William Sonoma's dimensions to me seem to be the most accurate in my opinion. And they are comparatively, they are 15 and 3 quarter inches in length, 14 inches in width, and 14 inches in height. So the emerald is a little longer, it is a little wider, and it's a little taller. The emerald overall is a bigger cooker according to the dimensions that I've just given you when compared. Alright, so giving you a closer up view of the cooker, I want to show you that here on the door they have a rack level guide on the door so depending on the function you're using you can see exactly where to basically put your food and I want to point out something that I'll go into in further detail later. One option this cooker has that most cookers I've used don't have is a sous vide option for you who like the sous vide. We'll get into that a little more later. But basically you have a knob here that is your function knob. It's not a button. It's just a spinning knob to select functions. You've got your time temp which is also a spinning knob. It's not a button. And then you've got a light button. You've got your start stop button. You switch your time between time and temp for this knob with this button here with your time temp button. And you've got a preheat button where you can set or skip preheat. And we'll go into that a little more later. But let's go on inside of the cooker now and we'll have a look at what's going on inside of here. You see on the bottom you have one, two heating elements. You've got nothing in the back. You've got nothing on the sides really. Except up here you've got your ambient probe right there. You've got a light there. You can change that light out. You can unscrew that and you can basically get a replacement light for it. Up top we've got one, two, three, four heating elements. We've also got an air fryer fan up top there. And I want to give you a good look at that fan. There's no uh, heating element like right inside of that cover there. There's no heating element I see inside of there. But there are the four heating element bars right there. And I wanted to point out that the light that you can change out by unscrewing that cover, it's a 25 watt halogen bulb if you ever need to replace that. Alright, so now I've got side by side the Ninja Fui XL Pro Air Fry Oven and the Emerald Digital Air Fry Oven. And so we can see just from a general glance that the Emerald's just a slight bit taller, but I'm going to do a little measuring of the two to kind of see, you know, where the differences lie in more detail. 
And when I go across the top of the the Ninja, it's 17 inches. I go across the top of the Emerald with my independent uh, measuring here. And it's a little over 17, not even 17 and a half inches there. When we look at the height of the two cookers, we see that the Ninja is just a little over 13 inches, about 13 and a half or so. The Emerald is about a little over an inch taller, a little over 14 and a half inches. When we go front to back, and I like to go hump to handle because you're going to need all that room you know just kind of going from you know the back part of the cooker doesn't really count when you need more room for its fan and stuff so going from the back hump all the way to the front handle we're looking at about 19 and a half inches and on this cooker the emerald it doesn't really have a hump in the back i probably should spin it around just so you can see but from basically the back of it it because it doesn't have much of a hump it has a little little thing back there but I'll show you it's about uh, about 15 and a half inches to the handle and so let me just spin it real quick for you to see on the sides here you can see you know some air vents and such around the back very small hump very 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 small hump back there it does have these uh, I guess kind of things for you to put your cord on that though that stick out a little bit now let's open up and go on inside of these cookers um, inside of here if I measure side to side inside I've got about 14 and a half on the ninja on the emerald I've got about 14 and a half there side to side front to back I do have a fan guard on my model because it was one of the earlier ones of this cooker. And you get about 12 inches there. With the emerald here, you go front to back. You've got about almost 13 inches, really, almost 13. You've got uh, about 12 and a half, let's say. So the uh, emerald seems to have a little more room in there. I'm going to just kind of like take out some of these accessories I mean like this pan here will it go in the emerald yeah it, it's a tight squeeze but it goes in it does go in and this pan here I mean this rack here it goes in the ninja so you know things are cross-fitting there that's pretty interesting and I'm gonna put this rack back down here I'm going to remove some of this stuff. You see the air fry basket for each. The Ninja, I think, maybe just by design, is, you know, maybe... Maybe they're close to the same. The Ninja seems like by design it's just a little... Maybe just a tad more can be held in the Ninja, but not much. And when you look at the pans, since the pans are a little different, you have a full side end to end pan here and this pan is not with the ninja so the ninja pan is just a little smaller than the emerald pan. Now I want to take a 13 inch bake pan with no handles and this is a nice USA steel pan and you can of course get that into your ninja foodie like so and trying it in the emerald. Likewise it fits with both cookers, I don't think if your pan has handles and it's 13 inches that you're going to get it in. But if you have one with no handles, you can get it in. If you're looking for one with no handles, you might be able to find it on my Amazon shop. Links in the video description. Maybe in the cooking accessories section there, you might be able to find a pan. Kind of like that one there. But uh, that's a comparison with this cooker. All right, and so this is the Cuisinart Chef's Convection Toaster Oven next to the Emerald now. And so here you can see that, you know, the Cuisinart is definitely longer. The Emerald's definitely taller. And we'll just do, you know, just for a quick measurement sake across the top, you got like 20 inches across here because you got this side panel thing going on. 
whereas here you've got the control panels up top so it's a little taller and so across the emerald you know we had about you know about 17 inches there or a little more and so on height let's do a look at the height we see that you know the emerald you know as we said about 14 and a half Cuisinart is at just about 11 inches and when we go front to back and there's a little hump in the back of the Cuisinart up to the front we've got about 16 inches again with the emerald and I guess we'll try and see where those little tabs are for the cord holder we've got you know just about 16 there just about 16 I guess depending on how far out those cord holders stick just about that much and so opening up inside we see inside the Cuisinart we've got 14 and a half inches again but on height we've only got about maybe seven inches so you know a lot less room inside of there and we got our 14 inch bait pan which we know fits in the Cuisinart fits in the emerald let's see if we can get a pan moved over here it's like it's not really. It's like this pan is probably just a tad too short to fit on those rails. Just a tad. And so let's see if this well used one here. It won't won't really fit in there. It's a little too narrow. That's interesting. So that's the deal as far as the uh, the accessories go and you know I don't think you're going to be trying to do any cross moving of stuff unless you have both of these. But that's just a little comparison of the two there. Okay, now it's time to do an initial plug in of the cooker. So I'm just going to take and plug it on in. Now, once we plug in, we get a nice little beep, we get our display that lights up. And so with this I just want to talk about a few things as we see it starts up with Fahrenheit but if you press and hold the light button for a few seconds it switches over to Celsius so I'm just going to switch it on back to Fahrenheit again I don't really know a means to stop the beeping so with this cooker you know the beeping that it does it does and I'll say that most functions on this cooker, you know, have the temp range of between 100 to 450 and time range. Most of them have a time range up to two hours. Now I just want to show you, when you use the function knob to go through selecting functions, you basically, you either can hit start to just start to cook and it just starts cooking when that red light is, well that circle's lit up red, you know that it's running. If you stop it, then the fan starts running, and you hear that fan. It does an automatic cool down for two minutes with that fan, and then the fan goes out. The same with the display, you know, you have to leave that for a few minutes. It's going to take more than just two minutes, but just leave it for a while. The display will go out as well. If you want to start with a preheat, then instead of hitting start on the function that you're on, like I'm on chicken wings, if I just hit start, it's just going to start cooking and counting down. But if I hit preheat, then it starts cooking with the preheat. So you see it's preheating. And that's how you do a preheat before you do your actual cook time and your temp. And then I had to hit stop twice to kind of, you know, get through the whole preheat and all. But now it's stopped. The red, you know, the light is out, so it's stopped. The fan is just running during a cool down. So let's do a quick run through of every function just to show, you, show them to you. We've got the french fries function. When we turn here we got chicken wings. We got frozen food, steak, bacon. A oh, setting for bacon, that's neat. We got vegetables. We got root vegetables. We got toast. We got broil. We got bake, we got bagel, we got roast, we got proof, you want to proof that dough, reheat, grill, pizza, cookies, defrost, dehydrate. Now, defrost has a limit, let's see what the time limit is for 
defrost. If I hit the time temp button. So defrost has a limit of two hours, but if you go past two, it just starts back over to one. But I'm going to go to like dehydrate. Dehydrate, I think, has like 12 hours as its limit. So dehydrate has a 12 hour limit. Then there's the sous vide. And with sous vide, what you do if you're into that game, you basically want to take and you'll put, you'll use the bottom rack level and you'll put your food in a sealed bag and you put it in a pot with water that you know is mostly full of water and put a lid on top and put it on in there and you can do your sous vide cooking like that and I just want to check the time limit for sous vide I'm gonna hit this time temp basically first you would hit temp and then you hit time to you know do your time and temp and I'm just gonna see the max for sous vide is six hours just so you know that. And then there's keep warm. And when I go to time and temp on keep warm just to see its limit. Keep warm has a limit of eight hours. So you can keep warm for up to eight hours. So those are all the different functions that the cooker has available. All right, so now we see that I'm gonna keep warm. I've got it set at two minutes. So let's just say I did a keep warm cook. So I just hit start as if I'm doing a keep warm cook. Then I'm going to stop it. It starts its fan as soon as I stop it. And I switch to a different function. So I switch to sous vide. Then I switch back to keep warm. It has already lost the two minutes that I set for keep warm. So there's no memory here at all with this cooker. Once you do a setting and you basically switch away from it, you're, you know, it's gone. You lose it as soon as you switch off of it. One interesting thing I want to show you while that fan is running though, whenever you open the door, it pauses. It stops whatever's going on when you open that door. When you close it, it goes back. So it's got a real nice auto pause feature there whenever you open the door. All right, now I want to take the cooker over to toast, but you notice when you don't use it for a while, the light goes out, and once you basically touch anything, it comes back to life again. So I'm switching over to toast, and sorry about that beeping, but like I said, nothing I can do in that regard. So now that I've got it on toast, I can, you don't get anything when you first turn the knob, but if you press time temp, you can go in and you can select the level of darkness you want so I'm putting medium and if you hit time temp again it doesn't really do anything you don't get to select the number of slices but the cooker is totally cool now and if I just hit start we see that it's gonna do uh, basically a three minute thing but it counts down it was like 300 seconds actually because it's counting down from 300 down in seconds so it's not really like minutes it's like 300 seconds which is interesting but we'll stop that and just keep that in mind for later okay so now let's do some temperature testing I'm going to turn to let's see I guess we can leave it on french fries I suspect a lot of these are probably just spins of the same type of thing with you know different presets and such but we're going to use the french fries function to do our temperature test and I'm going to basically hit the time temp button I've got the temperature at 450 I'm going to you know do a time I'm going to push it out a bit to just give us enough time to do all the testing we need to do with temperature but 30 minutes and I want to do a preheat because I want to see when it recognizes that it reached the temperature that we're targeting here but I've got my iGrill too with the ambient probe in there. It's reading about 77 to start. So I'm going to hit preheat to get things going. And we'll just keep track of what happens here now. Alright, so it started beeping. And it's telling me to add food. And I'll open the door and close it. But the temperature is only 289 degrees Fahrenheit. It has not got near 450 yet so the preheat is not a full temperature preheat 
and so you know it's pretty interesting how these cookers are starting to do this deal where they uh, you know do preheats that don't really reach the target temperature there's some of us who like preheat to reach the temperature that you are targeting and you know that's kind of been the way that cooking has been for a long time I understand that you know convection oven, ovens cook things faster and such but still all the same some of us like that target temperature to be reached but anyway we're not even 300 degrees I just opened the door and closed it and that lets it think that the food was added I thought but no it's still saying add food so I guess I'll just hit the start button and so you know that's what you have to do there after it's done preheating and you put your food in hit the start button and then things continue cooking and I guess we'll just watch it for a while and we'll see what happens you know will it ever reach 400 even I don't know but we'll give it some time all right so the cooker is now at 455 and it sounds like maybe it just adjusted a little bit I heard a little click in there so I think it realizes it reached 450 and it might be trying to avoid overheating so it reached 455 I heard the click it's you know been running for five minutes now on the clock here so you know this is pretty interesting I guess it takes the preheat plus another five minutes now it's down to 446 440 so yeah it adjusts itself is what it's doing it reaches 450 for real eventually and it knows that and then it adjusts for that but it doesn't do it in the preheat but it does reach its target temperature real good so that, that's nice I mean as far as it you know getting up to where it's supposed to get up to it does get there it just doesn't get there in the preheat so you know it's starting to go down now to like 430 or whatever but this does show it reaches its target temp and you know it, it then adjusts itself which is what you want a cooker to do you just got to keep in mind it's not going to happen during the preheat so I'm going to turn it off there the fan will run for a bit and I'll bring you right back in a moment and what I'm doing before I go into the next test is I'm finishing up a burn off here with all the accessories in there and if you haven't seen it I've already got a video where I talk about how to do the uh, burn off to get rid of smells on cookers and such and I will say with this cooker in particular I mean I've done burn offs with plenty of them but with this cooker in particular the smell during the burn off is stronger than it is with a lot of others that I've used it's particularly uh, a strong odor I mean it's not like uh, pass out type of strong but it's like just more noticeable basically than a lot of other cookers but finishing up this burn off then uh, Lord willing let things cool down and then we'll get into some of the other tests here and one more thing is my burn off just finished and things are in cool down this cooker is hot to the touch all over when it's hot I mean I've tried just you know tapping all around it it's hot all over it's kind of like a you can touch it for a second type of hot you don't want to hold your hand there too long type of hot you can touch it for a sec and you won't burn it just touching it for a sec but it's hot all over basically all right so I've let things totally cool down now and I've got a couple slices of my homemade wheat bread on here and if you're curious about how I do that you can see my videos about bread machines and such but we've got our bread in there and we're going to close up so I'm going to toast and now that I'm on toast if you recall earlier I hit the time tip and I took it to medium which is showing 300 uh, seconds we didn't do a test of things when they were warm earlier but after I do this toast I'll you know do it again and we'll see if it still shows 300 seconds but we're gonna hit start and we'll let this count down it's interesting that it's doing 300 seconds instead of like five minutes I mean this is kind of uh, tricky that it's doing its countdown of seconds like this because that's really five minutes if you're doing 300 seconds so we'll just let this continue and I'll bring you right back
So we're coming into the final seconds of this five minute cook, which it shows as three, or I guess 300. I've never had a cooker that counted down time like this. You know, all cookers I've ever used before this understood the difference between minutes and seconds. Sorry for that beeping. But here's our finished toast. You see the backside is not not cooked at all. The back's not cooked at all really. The top has some toasting but the back not so much. And let's look at this other one. We got kind of the same deal there. So I'm just going to close up right quick and I'm going to well let's it's doing the fan thing but I'm just trying to switch it back to toast and I'm going to Let's see, I guess I'll leave it on the medium. Well, let's, let's just, you know, it goes back to medium, it does the three. And if I hit start, it basically has no recognition that it's already hot. So, I want to do something else here. I'm going to go to, let's see. We'll go to, like, steak, just for example. And I'm going to hit the time temp. Well, I'm going to leave the temp there. I'm going to hit the time. And take time down to one minute and hit start and see what happens. Now I've hit, you know, one minute. It never shows me seconds. For these other um, different levels and things, it never shows seconds. So is it counting down 60 seconds here? Or is it counting down uh, 100 seconds? I'm going to let this keep running. And I'll have the timer going. And we'll see if that you know, what it's really translating minutes to. Is it really translating to 60 second minutes? Or like with toast, is it doing 100 seconds for everything? But we'll bring it back in one moment, but we'll let the timer continue to track this. So it always does four beeps at the end. So I just wanted to wait till the beeps were done before talking. But, you know, we'll see what the timer has to say as far as it tracking time when you set it to just like one minute because that'll tell us truly if, you know, the toast thing is just a kind of fluky thing with toast or does this thing count everything from like 100 seconds. And I'll bring it back in a little bit after, uh, you know, it's done with its whole cool down and such we'll do another test. Alright, so I have myself here frozen pizza. And uh, it's just your regular old DiGiorno style fries and crust pizza. Um, the regular size they sell for their pizzas like 12 inches. And so we're going to go ahead and we're going to get the cooker waked up. Woke up, hit that. Uh, Got to get uh, out of this time temp so I can this takes a little, you know, a little rethinking of how to do things with cookers to make sure I use this one, right? But I'm going to leave it at 400, which is its usual temperature for pizzas. Um, it defaults to 11 minutes. Um, I could push that out, but I'm going to go ahead. I'm going to preheat and try 11, and we'll see if it needs more time than 11. But we'll just... Um, you know, roll with that right now. It's preheating. It's got the air fry fan going while it's preheating. There is no control on this cooker to turn the air fry fan on and off yourself. It just kind of, you know, comes on when it wants to and doesn't when it doesn't. So, we'll just uh, let this cook. It is interesting, though, that pizza is using uh, the convection fan. You know, sometimes pizzas just kind of do a bake without much of a fan action. But we'll let this go ahead and continue to preheat. Alright, so our preheat is all done. And so I'm going to open up my pizza. And it just keeps beeping. You can't can't stop that, sorry. I'm trying to get my uh, sausage pieces onto the pizza all together. 
but open up here and get it on in there and now that it's in we'll go ahead and hit the start stop button and uh, I don't know you know if it's counting time like you know 100 seconds then of course 11 minutes is a lot more than 11 minutes but we'll see what happens and I'll bring you on back so things have been cooking in there for about nine minutes it's definitely using 60 second minutes from uh, my track of the time so you know it does get the 60 second minute thing right for regular cooking it seems it's just the toast function is kind of weird but it does at least show you the seconds on toast but this is definitely not going to be done in 11 minutes despite the preheat which was likely just a quickie preheat anyway so I'm basically going to hit time temp see if I can well that changes the temp so time let's see if I can add another like another 11 minutes or so to you know see if it gets about maybe 20 minutes in so let's go down to I guess we need to do about maybe nine more minutes or so and uh, that'll give us maybe about 20 minutes of total cooking time but we'll see how this does over the next nine or so minutes it's interesting that the rising crust has not risen yet so the pizza in total is not yet cooked but the outside of the pizza is well cooked the inside is sort of cooked so I think with that fan blowing that hot air down it's overcooking the top while the inside is not fully done and the underside those two heating elements on the bottom don't seem to be putting in I guess enough work to get the pizza in full done yet while the top is pretty done or near done but we'll let it continue to cook. Lord willing, it might be an even cook, but we'll see. So we'll just let it keep going. All right, so the pizza at this point, the top is definitely um, getting really well done, but the pizza itself, it's kind of rising, but it hasn't really fully risen yet. But I think we might get there, but we'll let this keep rolling and we'll see what happens. All right, it's coming to the last couple of minutes. I'm just going to add a little more time because it's not uh, not to the level of, I guess, fully doneness that I would desire it to be. So it's going to be a little over 20 minutes, but basically the cook time for pizza seems to take as long as basically it would in a conventional oven or other ovens, while at the same time it's going to really cook your top hard because you got a fan blowing down from the top. So things are starting to rise in there somewhat, but I'm going to let it keep going for a little bit longer. Alright, the top at this point is about as done as I'm going to let it go as far as I'm willing to allow. So just going to open up here. I'm going to go ahead and get this pizza out. pizza there and I'm going to well it already stopped it's just a fan it's so loud it kind of threw me off there but you can see the pizza you know kind of on this side maybe just slightly more done than the other I mean I guess I could have spun spun it for a perfectly even cook on all sides but I don't think it's far different not not really far different not by much so just go ahead and slice the pizza up here Alright, so this pizza is piping hot still, but I want to try and show you underneath. It is feeling nice and nice and uh, well cooked underneath, so I think it did, you know, ultimately cook all sides pretty good. So I'm just going to try and take a quick bite, and Lord willing I won't burn my mouth, but thank you Lord for this pizza. <laughs> It did do a good job cooking that pizza. 
it did a good job cooking that pizza. That pizza's good. So it did a good job with it. And the underside of that pizza has a crunchy bite. It's kind of like a crunchy bite under the, you know, the underside. The top is well cooked. The inside is moist. So great job on the pizza. All right, so now I'm going to test cooking some frozen wings in here with that wing function. So I'm going to just get myself some wings out of here. I've also got myself a little oil in the bowl here, and I've got myself some uh, lemon pepper seasoning. Nothing in this video is sponsored at all, but these are just uh, things I use. So, you know, you use what works for you. Let me get this uh, bag open here. Nine, ten, eleven. And that's all. So I'm just going to get these mixed up in the oil and then I'll uh, get some of the lemon pepper seasoning on them. And so I'm going to go ahead and get the cooker um, awake here and I'm able to just spin around. So I'm going to spin over to wings, chicken wings. It defaults to 450, 18 minutes. Um, I'm not sure how that's going to do, but We'll go ahead and we'll try and preheat with that. And once it's done preheating, we'll get them on in. All right, we're told to add in the food, so open it up. And I'm going to, get, I'm going to put this one on level three up here. And we'll put the pan just underneath to catch the drippings and such. Got that all in, close up, and hit start. And we'll let that cook for a while. Alright, these wings have been going for 14 minutes. I'm going to try and open up and see if I can flip things over. A lot of smoke coming out. So, it was holding the smoke in pretty well. But, uh, now there's some, you know, smoke action when I open. But, there was nothing during the cook so far coming out. So, I like that the thing pauses and I can, you know, flip these wings over. They're looking pretty good so far. Had a couple in the back here that were stuck together, but that's all good. I'm just going to give them all a flip. So let's close back on up. We'll let things continue to cook. And I think I'm just going to add a few minutes. I mean, from the texture of them at this point, well, I'm probably going to add more than a few minutes. I'm going to add like. Uh, another 10 minutes so they'll go about 28 minutes total all right things have been going for 25 minutes starting to get a good bit of smoke action coming out the sides and such so basically stopping the cook right there probably a good bit of smoke in there when I open up but we're going to take a look got my utensils cleaned off and such for you who worry about that sort of thing, we should always clean your temples off. I always do, whether I say it or not. But uh, let's see, we got a good bit of smoke going on for sure. Because that, that bottom pan is catching a lot of a lot of stuff. But we see the finished wings. They did finish off, you know, pretty decent. So they look good. You know, they took 25 minutes, but they finished pretty good all the same. You know, I wouldn't say that this cooks as fast. I mean, I can say this right off the bat. This doesn't cook as fast as the Cuisinart Digital Air Fryer Toaster Oven. No, it does not. But it does uh, some decent cooking all the same. So, we got the wings done. And get this last one way out of the back there. So there we go. I'm just going to let these cool down a little bit. And just for the sake of testing, even though I'm pretty sure they're well done, we'll check them. Yeah, they're like in the 180s there. See they're above 180, 184. So, good and done in 25 minutes. And just give these a little more time to cool before maybe biting into one. Alright, so we've let the wings cool for a bit. So I'm going to go ahead and do a taste of one now. Alright, 
they're good, they're moist. The outside is not very crispy. I mean, it's, you know, they're done, but not very crispy. If you like a really crispy outside, they're not there. They're moist though, you know, real moist inside and totally done. So they turned out good all the same. And, you know, the cooker is able to do some decent work cooking up some things. The heat coming down is a factor in how things cook. And so I want to talk about cleaning the cooker. When it comes to cleaning, you want to use like a wet soapy cloth, clean all the uh, inside and such out. You can use like a plastic scrubbing pad if you want to scrub anything. They recommend for the accessories not to use a dishwasher for anything. They recommend washing everything by hand. I will say in my personal experience, I usually throw those uh, air fry baskets into the dishwasher. I knock off any excess beforehand and then put it in a dishwasher to knock off, you know, and clean any of the smaller stuff that's caught in them. And they come out just fine usually. And um, so that's basically how you have to clean it and how it goes as far as cleaning the cooker. Now with the warranty, interestingly, they have a six month warranty. You know, not a one year, not a 60 day, but a six month. So they're kind of like in the middle there. And so, you know, that's basically all there is for this cooker. Um, I am in the middle of looking at another cooker at the moment that I just did a recent review for. So, you know, still got to work through that one and get the 30 day review out for that one before getting into more looking into this cooker and a 30 day review in the future for this cooker. But I will not be saying anything else about this cooker until that time and it's going to be a while. I'm not giving a defined date, I'm just saying it's going to be a while. So, you know, if you don't see the 30 day review for this one out there, just wait a while, Lord willing, we'll get around to that. But I hope that this, you know, is able to help you for what it is. And so in the video description, lots of ways to help the channel, namely my book being one. You can see the uh, link in the video description for that. Also, if you're interested in the cooker itself, there'll be a, uh, a link in the video description for if they don't have this one, since I do a lot of the affiliate stuff, you know, through a certain, certain online shop, they don't have this one. Um, I know they have the Calm Dough, and I'll just link to the Calm Dough. Like I said, two totally different companies. The cookers look strikingly similar. I don't know anything else about it more than that, except for they're separate companies, and they say they have no affiliation. So, you know, all the same, they look a lot, a lot alike. So, if I can't link to this one, if that one's not available, you know, then I'll link to the other one. You know, and it is what it is from there. We'll see how it works out. You know, but that's the best I can do. Anyway, with all of that said, also on my blog, SuperWaveOvenRecipes.com, you get a lot of recipes for these types of cookers and such. And again, with all that said, if you like this video, give it a thumbs up. Share the video with a friend. Leave a comment. Subscribe. Hit that notification icon. And good eating.